everybody, I'm Liberty Vitter, the senior data scientist here at Decision Desk HQ. Drawing on the most recent polling from Decision Desk HQ in the Hill, let's take a look at the most likely landscape for the 2024 presidential race as of this minute. We saw some super interesting things this past week, including the 13% of Michigan Democratic primary voters that put down uncommitted, supposedly in protest of Biden's policy on the war in the Middle East. Will those same people be willing to shoot themselves in the foot by not voting for Biden in the general election, in essence, handing the state to Trump? Who knows, but it is definitely something to follow in the coming months. We also have new data on several key battleground states this week. Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Georgia. So remember, a state needs five qualifying polls to be included in the polling average. The rest of the states that we don't have those polls on yet are placed into race rating categories based upon the results of the 2020 presidential election. To be considered a safe state, it has to be decided by more than 12 points in either direction, likely states by 7 to 12 points, and lean states are below 7 points. As the map shows right now, before we dive into these battlegrounds, Republicans lead Democrats with 166 electoral votes to 155 in the electoral count. Of course, 270 electoral votes are required to win the presidential election, so let's see who is going to get there first with our updates as of today. So, our first battleground, Nevada. This will certainly be a battleground in 2024 and one of the Republican Party's primary targets this November as they look to flip the state into their column just as they did with the governor's office in 2022. Donald Trump is absolutely on track to win the state. He leads Biden by 6.1% based upon 18 polls. Trump has continuously led in this average since last October. So going back to the map, Nevada remains firmly in the lean Republican column. As for the state of Arizona, the second closest state in 2020, Biden's victory by just 0.3 percentage points made him the first Democrat to carry Arizona in a presidential race since 1996. Two new polls have been added to the average in the Grand Canyon state, showing Trump eight points up from the Rasmussen reports and Trump six points up from the morning consult. Both polls show Trump with a serious lead, meaning Trump average lead over Biden based upon 26 polls now increases from 3.7% last week all the way up to 5.1% this week. So our other battleground of Arizona joins Nevada in the lean Trump column, though the fact that Arizona's margin for Trump is lower than in Nevada may come as a surprise given that Arizona has voted to the right of Nevada in each of the last six presidential election cycles. This could potentially be due to a shift in the demographics of the population of Nevada post-COVID. So now moving over to the Midwest, Iowa and Ohio, previously part of the Obama coalition, are now reliable strongholds for Trump. Both Iowa and Ohio voted for him by more than eight points in 2016 and 2020. Trump's lead has held steady in Iowa at 9.5% based upon eight polls surveying the race. The same can be said for Ohio. It remains at Trump plus 11.3% based upon seven polls. So these two Obama coalition swing states go down as likely Republican on the 2024 map after having voted for Trump by likely margins in both 2016 and 2020. So far, Trump is cleaning up in the 2024 battlegrounds. Moving on to the Upper Rust Belt, this region has traditionally been labeled as the Blue Wall. However, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania broke away from Minnesota in 2016, voting for Trump by less than a point, before then flipping back in favor of Biden by very narrow margins in 2020. These four states have voted for the same presidential candidate in eight of the last nine elections, backing Democrats in all but one. They proved 
truly decisive in both 2016 and 2020. I mean, had Hillary Clinton carried Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, she absolutely would have defeated Trump in 2016. And had Trump carried them in 2020, he would be serving a second term right now and we would be looking at a very different 2024. They'll once again be critical battlegrounds in 2024. Finally, we have added a couple of new polls to the Wisconsin average. Trump's lead is growing from 1.7% last week to 2.4% this week based upon 16 polls, as both of the last two polls added to the average from Emerson College and Kaplan Strategies had Trump leading by a couple of points. Emerson College is Trump plus three and Kaplan Strategies is Trump plus two. We've added four new polls in Michigan. They've been all over the place, but the overall average ticks up from Trump plus three to Trump plus 3.4. The former president holds an average of 45.5% to Biden's 42.1. But let's take a quick look at what I mean by all over the place here. So starting with the most recent survey by the North Star Opinion Research, Trump and Biden are tied at 43% each among 600 likely voters' opinions on the race in Michigan. But then an Emerson College poll has Trump leading by two points among a thousand registered voters. And in a sort of outlier, Kaplan Strategies has Trump leading by 10 points in their poll, surveying 1,019 registered voters. Finally, according to Morning Consult's latest survey, Trump again leads Biden by just two points. So all over the map, but with the map pointing in the Trump direction. So this means that Michigan Michigan joins Wisconsin in the lean Republican column. Finally, in Pennsylvania, Trump's lead has jumped up quite a bit here to 4.2%, now based on 28 polls. Two new surveys came in, raising Trump's average 1.4 points from 2.8% last week. Morning Consult has Trump leading by six points with 49% to Biden's 43%. Comparatively, a more recent Emerson College poll had Trump ahead by just two points. Trump has notably led now in the last three surveys, whereas Biden had previously led or been tied with Trump in four out of the last five in Pennsylvania. So we are definitely seeing a trend here. Here's the deal though. All three of these pivotal Rust Belt states are bunched together right around the two to three point lead for Trump in the lean Republican category. You need to keep in mind that even if Biden manages to make a comeback in Arizona and Nevada, as well as Georgia, which we'll get to here in a bit, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan alone would be enough to win him the presidency so long as Trump holds all of his 2020 states. With five states remaining as toss-ups on the maps, there are 79 electoral votes up for grabs. Donald Trump already has 250 electoral votes to his name. He could surpass 270 with just a win in Florida. Joe Biden, meanwhile, trails well behind with 209 electoral votes on our electoral map. So let's proceed to New Hampshire, where Biden was victorious by seven and a half points in 2020. His lead remains at 6.2% based upon eight polls. No new polls have been added to the average, so this remains a lean Democrat. The same can be said down in the Commonwealth of Virginia. In Virginia, Biden's lead has remained the same at 4.1% based upon 10 polls. The incumbent carried Virginia's 13 electoral votes by just over 10 points in 2020. This was the largest margin for a Democrat in this formerly reliable Republican state since 1944, so it also goes down as lean Democrat. North Carolina is next, a perennial purple state that has been decided by less than five percentage points in four straight presidential elections. Republicans have won each of the last three. This is a state that Trump will absolutely need to hold in 2024 if he's going to take back the White House. And in terms of polling, it might actually be the state where Trump has consistently exceeded expectations the most. No new polls have been added since late January as Trump leads holds at 7.9% based upon 14 polls. So North Carolina remains firmly in the likely Republican column. All right. Now, if all of these polling averages hold steady elsewhere, Joe Biden would need a miracle in Georgia and Florida. Trump stands at 266 electoral votes right now to Biden's 226. 
So as for the state of Georgia, Trump's lead has narrowed for the third week in a row from 7.6% last week to 7.1% now based on 20 polls. The survey that moved this average came from Morning Consult with 800 registered voters responding. Trump still led by six points over Biden in that survey, but it did cause his overall margin of lead to dip to its lowest point since December 2023. Still, a 7.1% lead keeps Republicans just hovering right above the lean Republican column, still in the likely Republican territory. It's also important to note that Georgia itself is structurally a Republican Republican state, so it would be super shocking just in general if Biden pulled off a win there again. Finally, we have Florida with its 30 electoral votes at stake. We still have not seen a poll assessing the head-to-head -head contest between Biden and Trump since late November. I think that is really truly indicative of how unlikely the state is to be heavily contested by the Biden campaign in 2024, since Florida has shifted so hard to the right since the 2016 election. Trump's lead currently sits at 9.1% based upon eight polls, meaning that Florida joins uh, Georgia receiving a likely Republican rating. So overall, here is where we are this week. Republicans have held their lead in the race to 270 with 312 electoral votes to Democrats 226. Please feel free to leave your thoughts, comments, and reactions in the comments below. That is all for Decision Desk HQ video this week. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you did indeed like it, and subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already. Also, make sure to check out more content from our channel here, and we will catch you next time.